Good afternoon, everyone. We need a stretch. Everybody needs to stretch. Arms up, down, forward. If you turn to your partner beside you, you can give them a little bit of a neck massage and then we're good to go. <laughs> now I have to tell you I'm probably the most technically challenged person in the room. But I'm going to try to advance these slides as best as I can. Um, I'm here to talk about something that's maybe um, a little bit more serious, and that's uh, the Rotary Foundation. I don't know if it needs to be serious necessarily, but it certainly is a big part of who we are and what we're all about. And it always gives me great pleasure to talk about the foundation. I am very passionate um, about the foundation. And uh, so I have an opportunity to tell you just a little bit about uh, what the foundation's all about and how it works. So I like the way uh, Michelle named it, the celebration of, of uh, giving um, for this district, because it certainly is very apt. So first of all, who in the room is a guru about foundation? Any gurus in the room? Neil, you're not putting your hand up? Absolutely not. <laughs> Most of you have heard about the foundation. What is the foundation? What is it? Anybody? It's our charitable arm. It's, it's the place we go to to get our money, right? Wait, it's the place that we go to give our money too. It's both. So some of these slides you will already have seen. Let's see if I can make this move. No? Point it towards the computer. I told you I was the most challenged person in the room. Which one? Thank you. <laughs> Here, I can, I can do this. All right, so we have mission and vision, and you've already seen the vision statement, but I'm going to show it to you in a little bit again. The mission of the Rotary Foundation. Lots of words up there. The, what I really want you to remember about the mission of the Rotary Foundation is that it is there solely to support you and your club members in the projects and things that you are the most passionate about. That's what the mission of the foundation is. So it is there to provide you with the support that you need to do all of those things that everyone else has already talked about. Inspiring people, getting them engaged, doing all of those things as we move forward. That is the mission of the Rotary Foundation. Now see, I can, I can go into the computer and maybe do a little bit better. You've seen this earlier today, Jeff showed it to you, uh, and uh, we actually shared it. Someone, someone very aptly shared all of the words of the, uh, of the vision. And uh, what you might not know is that the vision was actually put in place or changed by the trustees in 2017, which was the centennial year for the foundation. But it was changed to this with the input of a number of many, many Rotarians and feedback from a, a many Rotarians from around the globe. And when they put this in place, they also put in place four priorities or strategies that they really wanted to focus on moving forward for the next five years. It really was to increase impact around the globe. It was to expand our reach as Rotarians, um, as a Rotary around the globe with respect to what we want to do. We want to enhance Rotarian engagement and we want to change our ability to adapt. All of those things are critical in terms of moving forward. Engagement we talk about in terms of membership. Inspiration we talk about. Doing more with what we have we talk about. And those are all really critical things. And that's really what the foundation is all about. It's there to support you. And so one of the greatest tools that we do have to help us with all of these things is the Rotary Foundation. And of course, it is created by the generosity of probably most of us in this room. Um, friends of Rotary, Rotarians out there, they have amassed a significant amount of dollars to be able to support us in doing all of those things that we are very, very passionate about doing. When um, I was introduced, um, the, you said vocational training team. I would never have had the opportunity financially or any other way to go on a vocational training team where I truly, 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 I think as Michelle alluded earlier, took Rotary here. We talk about why we're Rotarians. 
Um, I'll tell you a story. I became a Rotarian because my business organization said I needed to participate in the community. It's now 28 years later. I, that business organization no longer supports me and hasn't been for a very long time. Hasn't supported me for a very long time. I'm still a Rotarian because I have that inspiration. Because I know that Rotary is not here. It's here. And if you can do that with your club members, if you can do that with you, you'll be a lifer like me. So that's what the foundation um, is doing and can do. And it is there because of the generosity of, of the people that are, uh, are giving. Um, what we do and, ho and how we already, sorry, I'm not going to go through that. How we already expand our reach or work on our, our, our making sure that we have greater impact around the globe is evident in all of the things that we've done. So in 2018, there were 1,306 global grants approved. And in that time frame, we spent $86 million on doing good in the world. So we already are reaching out. We already are doing all of those things. $35 million spent on preventing disease around the globe. That does not include polio. Linda's going to talk about that in a little bit. Providing clean water, supporting education. And so we're already out there. We're already doing all of these things um, to help the world and to, and to make sure that we expand our reach. We get a lot of contributions and donations to be able to do that. Why do we contribute to the Rotary Foundation? Why do I contribute? Why is the Rotary Foundation my charity of choice? It's because of the stewardship. It's because we make sure that we take care of the reputation of Rotary. We take care of the projects. We take care of the money. So if I donate a dollar to Rotary, I know that that dollar is going to be well taken care of. But not only do I know that that dollar is going to be taken care of, there are outside organizations that are telling us the same thing. Charity Navigator is, is an organization that rates charities in the United States. We have, we're in the top 10% for the 11th year in a row. That is unheard of. And CNBC has rated us as the world's outstanding foundation. We are rated as the top 10 charity changing the world. That's some pretty amazing kudos uh, to tell us what we're doing and, and what, we're, what we're achieving. And so those are all the reasons. There's lots of other reasons people give. Um, I want to actually, oh, sorry, uh, partnerships. I forgot to talk about partnership. Why, why do we have an opportunity for partnerships? Of course we have an opportunity for partnerships because we take care of our money and because we want to make sure we expand our reach. And we can expand our reach by partnering with places like Shelterbox, by partnering with the Gates Foundation. The Gates Foundation would not be a partner with us if we didn't exercise stewardship, if we didn't take care of the money. They wouldn't be donating the kinds of money that they are to the Polio Plus program if we didn't take care of it. So we have a lot of partnerships as a result of the things that we do well with the foundation. And uh, uh, Linda, We'll probably tell you a story about the World Health Organization and how they kicked us out to begin with, but they're certainly a strong partner now. And these are some of the other partners that we have, and, and I'm not going to go into any detail about that, but these are all the places that we work with to make sure that we can do more around the globe. Because collectively, we cannot do all of those things that we want to do without the strong partnerships that we have formed. Arch Clump Society. Does it, anyone know, or it, in the room, someone, can you tell me what an Arch Clump Society member is? Laura. A donation to the foundation in excess of $250,000 US. Correct. So I'm not sure if everyone in the back heard that, but a donation to the Rotary Foundation of 250,000 US dollars is an Arch Clump Society member. And so I know that your district actually has a number of Arch Club Society members. In fact, I know that you have a member that's a, d a double level two Arch Club Society member, which means a half a million dollars worth of donations. And so they pulled some of the Arch Club Society members and said, why do you give all of this money to the foundation? And the overwhelming theme, of course, 
change in the world, service above self. We believe, we are a firm believer in service above self. And of course, we all want a better tomorrow. Giving to the foundation and doing the things that we do are not things that are going to benefit us to the degree that we think. They're going to benefit our children and they're going to benefit our grandchildren. They're going to benefit future generations. And so that's why these people are giving at the level that they're giving. And that's why it's my rotary, or sorry, my foundation of choice or my uh, char charity of choice. I want to talk about celebrating because this is about celebration. So this is your district in terms of what you've done over the course of the last um, five years. And this is just the annual programs fund again. So in looking at what you've accomplished, um, and don't panic about the 2018-19 number. I know that you have a significant endowment that will be coming through in June. And so that number actually is going to be higher. And it's going to equal the previous year for sure. Um, just in terms of overall, you're already, without that endowment going in, already ahead of the curve for last year. So congratulations. Kudos to you. And then if you lose your notes, <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to highlight what you've done because it really truly is a celebration. And I wanted to share with you that um, as Rotarians, and you know this, we don't wait for solutions. We work at creating solutions. And if I look at District 5360, you certainly have done a whole lot to create solutions around the problems of the world, the problems of your community. And just a couple of examples of the footprints that you are leaving in your community today. And these are just a few. So if yours isn't up there, please don't beat me up for that. Um, these are just a few I wanted to highlight in terms of the things, the impact that you have on your community right now. So your reach is already there. Your footprints are already in the sand in relation to the good things that you're doing. And so whether you're talking about a stay in school program locally, whether you're talking about reduction in poverty, uh, dealing with the hungry children, uh, all of those are really great things and they're going to change the world for the people that you're impacting. And that's really important. You're also leaving footprints around the globe. And when I look at, again, I picked four of the many, many global grant projects that you have um, either halfway through, some mostly through, uh, some just started. And you're in India, you're in Uganda, you're in Pakistan, you're in Guatemala. I know that you're trying to get into Mexico um, with a water filter program. So there are lots of places in the world that you're already reaching and you're already there. But for those of you that aren't involved in any of these projects, these are the possibilities. Either to be directly involved in one of these or to partner with another club that's working on something like this. And this is the stuff that gives you the inspiration and the stuff that engages your members to make sure that they're active and that they're vibrant and that they can do all the things that uh, you want them to do. A um, little bit can have a large impact. I always talk about foundation and I contribute to the level that I'm comfortable contributing. Not everyone can contribute. I think as, as Laura said, we're not all the same. And we don't all understand the same thing. So when I say contribute at my level, that's different than what someone else can say I can contribute. But a little bit has a big impact. And I think the most important thing is the knowledge that these are the possibilities and here's what can be done. And if you merge all of those little ones together, you're still going to get something really great. And that's, that's the most important part. So what's in it for you as a club president? Um, and what are the things that we want? Uh, we're talking about vibrant clubs. And of course, if your members are engaged and involved in projects, you have people that want to come. They're excited. They're engaged. They're wanting to work on things. And what attracts people to any organization is when people are having fun, when they're working, when they're doing things. Um, I, I, we have the luxury of having just established a satellite club with our club. They're a year old now. And we just finished 
uh, water and sanitation project with them. So the Satellite Club worked at getting the funding together for the water and sanitation project in Guatemala. We are just getting the dollars in to Rotary International and the first thing three of them said to me is, so what's the next project? What are we working on? They're excited. They want to get their hands wet their feet wet. They want to be in there. They want to be working. And I have to tell you that this satellite club is kind of like a Rotaract club. A lot of them are just fresh graduates out of high school or university. And some of them are still going to university. But they're so excited because they got their feet wet with the water project and, and it was great. And so people want to come. And so now we have new members that are wanting to join the satellite club because they're engaged in this project. So whether you're talking about membership drive, whether you're talking about publicity, whatever you're talking about, the foundation is the cornerstone that is going to help you to get that engagement, that excitement, so that you can get things rolling in the right direction. And of course, let's not forget the leveraging part, right? Because if you can apply for a grant, I can tell you that uh, we put $15,000 into this water project in Guatemala to spend $49,000 US in the actual completion of the water project. The rest of it came from grants from the Rotary Foundation. And so it means that you're not fundraising as hard or as much as you need to. What a great tool to have in your back pocket so that you can work with it. So I would certainly encourage you to take a look at that. Those are the three key things for you as a club president that I think are, are really, really important. So I'm going to bring it right back to the beginning when I started talking about what is the foundation. What does foundation actually look like? And I'm going to ask you to close your eyes for a second because I'm going to tell you what a picture of foundation really is. It is a young boy in India on his knees because he is crippled by polio. He's holding his mother's hand anxiously waiting for his baby sister to receive a life-saving vaccine so she does not have to suffer the same fate he did. It is the face of Sophia in Guatemala who gets to go to school for the first time in a school that Rotary built with teachers who have improved training skills because they were trained by a vocational training team from Canada. It is the happy face of a family in Mexico who is healthier because they, they will have clean drinking water with the use of filters that were provided by District 5360 Rotarians. The world needs you and Rotary now more than ever. I hope that you will take some time to learn a little bit more about the foundation in your year or for your year and uh, hopefully we are going to be able to help you. You already have a great team right here in District 5360. Your team, of course, your district foundation chair, Don Taylor, and your grants committee chair, Kurt Kowalchuk, who are fabulous support for you. Um, Linda and I are here as well for the rest of tonight and, and part of tomorrow. Um, but of course, Christine knows where to get a hold of us if, if she has any questions. I want to thank you for your time, and I'm going to give Linda some time to talk about the Polio Plus program. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Um, the figures that for your contributions to polio already this year, just polio, is over a hundred thousand dollars. So congratulations, congratulations. And when you give those kind of figures that uh, Eva had up there, close to a million dollars, and those are U.S. dollars too, close to a million dollars, half of that goes into the World Fund and it comes back as grants, but some of those grants go to polio. So you are a huge supporter of polio. Now when I got the um, email that I was supposed to dress Western, I didn't have a whole lot to wear. But I have something that I want to show you, which is part of our Western theme. 30 years ago this week, 30 years ago this week, in district, the District 536 conference was in Calgary. And a group of Rotarians from Westlock, Alberta, which is about an hour north of Edmonton, in fact it's uh, it's uh, Laura's hometown, decided that they were going to have a wagon train that came from Westlock, that drove from Westlock all the way to Calgary. 
they'd have two wa covered wagons. Behind the covered wagon was a motor home, and behind pulling a trailer behind the motor home was an iron lung. This, this wagon train left Westlock, went to all the Rotary Clubs on the way down, made presentations in Edmonton and Red Deer, all the small towns, went into schools, and by the end of that event, they had pledges and gifts of a million dollars. That was in 1989. Can you imagine a million dollars in pledges? And that was written up in the Rotary magazine in the early 90s, and it's um, in uh, a Rotary history book here that I have. It's also written up in there. And to celebrate that, there's been many stories all across what Western Canada at the time, but there's an award in R Rotary right now that's called the Polio Pioneer Award. And uh, it's for polio. It's for polio, and it has to be an activity that took place before, I believe it's 95. And so there are two gentlemen here that have play a major part. What one was Walter Zesno, who is a hit, was a hairdresser by vocation, but he always wanted to drive horses across the country. And this is as close as he got. He put the wagon train together, and the incoming district governor was Albert Miller. And Albert Miller was a farmer. Some of you are nodding your head. You're, you know Albert. Albert did most of the logistics, and this was a huge event because there were many horses that went, went along, uh, you know, with, with this wagon wagon train. Anyway, they, they did all this, and I want to share with you this, this beautiful crystal that has been presented this year to Walter, who is 94, and to uh, Albert, who t t turned 90 last week, this is going to be presented, there's one for Walter and one for Albert. It will be presented at our district conference in the fall. But I wanted to bring it because you share it as well, because you, you were part of all of that million dollars in pledges and contributions. But I also want to point out that this is available, anyone can apply. Uh, a Rotarian can send in the name of someone they knew who was involved in the early years of Rotary in working with Polio Plus. And I hope that maybe next year there'll be one from 536. I'd like all seven di districts that I work with on Polio to have one of these in their district um, ne next year. <coughs> now there's one other thing that I have to share with, with you that um, is especially significant about our joint district. But this one has more of a 5360 feel. And I want to quote from this book. One success story from Western Canada was Verniel Martin's best-selling cookbook, Among Friends. Who has that cookbook in their home? Is that all? Is that all? Among friends raised more than one million dollars for Polio Plus. Martin had lost two childhood friends to polio. Although her husband, a Rotary past district governor, was skeptical at first about the cookbook plan, Martin persisted in gathering and testing recipes from Rotary clubs throughout the district. The photographer for the book reduced his bill by more than a half. He explained, afterwards that his father had died of polio. By early 1988, Among Friends was into its fifth printing and Martin was legally blind. She was processing orders for as many as a thousand copies a day, many of them from Rotary Clubs which resold them. And that book raised a million dollars. For those you who don't know about that book, this is a copy of it. Um, I was what you would call a Rotary Ann in those days. And I have two of my recipes in this book. Um, and you know, I was thinking when I pulled it out to do this presentation, what a fun thing to do in one of your clubs. Have a potluck. You can find these books if, uh, around. They're, they're around or you can get one on eBay. I had to buy one on eBay because I 
got rid of mine in some moves one time, um, and have a potluck, use some of the recipes, and look for the names of the individuals that are in here. Every recipe names the name of the club and uh, the, the na name of the Rotary. And there's a section for the Rotary Ann's recipes, of course. And then there's a section that just has the, the Rotarians. And I guarantee that there will be someone from any club that was existing in 1988. Now this is the iron lung that went along behind that, uh, that trail. Again, it stopped. And I understand that iron lung still exists. Some think it belongs to 5360, and some think it belongs to 5370, but it belongs to all of us. <laughs> Is it here this weekend? Oh, perfect, perfect. I know I'm, I'm running out of time. I have so many things I want to share, because polio isn't a passion, but there's one thing I do need to share today. When I was doing my training for becoming a district governor, I was in a small room, it was a, 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 it was a workshop on polio. And there were about 20 of us in the room. We were talking various things about programming and what, you know, what districts should be doing. There was a very handsome young man, about 40, sitting across from me. And he said, if we were doing this in my country, there'd be a good chance one of us might be shot. Now he gave one of these gifts. He had, some people would distribute gifts at these meetings. And uh, he had put one of these, and I don't know what it is, a tablecloth, a scarf, a headdress. And when I was um, about to get rid of all this stuff that I could not take home on the plane, I saw his face in a card on this, and so I knew I had to take it with me. When I was district governor, I put it on every time and spoke about polio. And I pulled it out last night to bring down here, because within the last two weeks, four Rotary polio workers have been shot. They were shot in Pakistan and uh, just a sad time because they're doing our work. They're doing our work. And some might ask, well, why do we continue? Why do we continue? Um, we will get over this and there's other aspects of that that I could share, but I know my, my time is, is, is very short. Um, there are elections taking place in, in uh, Pakistan, and so part of it is that. The uh, head of the polio, the, 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 their health minister has been dismissed in, in Pakistan. Head of polio has been dismissed. But uh, everything is, that can humanly be done is being done now. And Ramadan is coming up, so some are feeling that's a good thing because things will quieten down for a while. But it's basically all about elections taking place. And there have been uh, new cases in the last week too. So if you last checked, you may have seen there's been nine cases this year. Well, there are really actually five more that may or may not be yet reported, but we know for sure there have been five more cases. And it's all in Pakistan, so it's very unconcerning at this moment. That's the struggle we're going through. That's the struggle. But we will get there. We will get there. And the reason that we need to continue, there's five reasons. We need to improve lives because there are 16 million people walking today who would be paralyzed if we had not done anything. It's to invest in the future. If we quit today, in 10 years, more than 200,000 children would be paralyzed. And it's to improve child, child health because the surveillance networks and the vaccination campaigns monitor children for vitamin deficiencies and measles. It's not just polio that we do. And to save money, over 20 years, if polio were to be eradicated, the savings would be worldwide 40 to $50 billion in healthcare. 
And the third is to make history because polio eradication will be the greatest public health achievement ever done. And we're looking forward to mid-August when Nigeria will be declared polio free. They have not had a wild polio case since August of 2016. In August of 2019, uh, hopefully that will still hold, we only two more months, polio free and that will be all of Africa. No one would ever have believed 10 years ago Africa would be, be free. India would be free. So thank you for all you've done. All the facts and figures are on the End Polio Now website or the Global Polio Eradication Initiative website and I know you all know how to get there. Their resources are amazing. Use them in your clubs, tell the stories, um, and if you want to get in touch with me, I'm more than happy to help. Uh, that's what zone coordinators are here for. So thank you so much. <laughs>